From DailyDoseOfWeirdNews.com, I'm Darren Marlar, and this is your Daily Dose of Weird News, brought to you by Send Out Cards. You don't have to leave the house, you don't have to buy any stamps, and you still get a physical card in the mail with whatever message you wish to send. Choose from the hundreds of existing cards or create one of your own complete with your own photos if you wish. Try it now absolutely free by visiting SendOutCards.com slash weird. That's SendOutCards.com slash weird. The government admits that the Social Security Administration has paid over $30 million to dead people over the years, sadly proving we are worth more dead than alive. That's a nice thought. British researchers have found that horses are happier and more relaxed if mirrors are fitted inside their stables, but only if those horses are complete studs to begin with. Researchers are working on a thermal imager that one day might be used to detect liars at a government checkpoint. The research arm of the Defense Intelligence Agency has been working since the year 2000 on a camera that measures minute changes in facial skin temperature. Those fluctuations, involuntary and undetectable even to the owner of the face, indicate a stress response. Researcher Troy Brown says that might signal untruths. The DIA is deeply interested in deciphering deception in job candidates applying for positions with access to classified information and in prisoners captured on the battlefield undergoing interrogation. So far, the only way the government can get an inkling that someone may be less than truthful is a polygraph, the so-called lie detector test. Washington, D.C. politicians are working quickly to draft legislation to keep the technology away from government buildings. 286 rabbits were removed from a house in California. And right before Easter. Comedian-turned-entrepreneur Byron Allen has purchased the Weather Channel for a rumored $300 million, which can only mean Byron Allen hasn't heard of these things called smartphones, where you can get the weather anytime you want without waiting for the end of a commercial break. High levels of the stress hormone cortisol in hair may be a strong predictor of heart attacks months in advance, say Canadian researchers. Issues such as jobs, marital or financial problems, they're linked to an increased risk of developing cardiovascular disease, including heart attacks, and it can be shown through the levels of cortisol in your hair. Well, of course you're more susceptible to a heart attack. You're working so hard, even your hair is stressed. A Chinese car maker is producing the world's most expensive SUV, the Carlman King, only 10 of them, which looks like something Batman could own. Yours for just $2.2 million, meaning only Batman can afford to buy one. Ladies, if you're looking for a man that's not afraid to do a little housework, marry a teacher. The study found that guys who work in fields typically dominated by females do 25% more housework compared to men who work in male-dominated jobs. So if you really want to increase your odds of getting a man who'll do housework, find a guy who's looking for a sugar daddy. Tom Jones has been booked to perform at Queen Elizabeth II's 92nd birthday celebration. I hear he's thinking about getting new hips just for the occasion. Walmart has some new robots that roll around the store and can scan an entire aisle in just 90 seconds. The robots will conduct inventory as well as let human employees know to fix mispriced or misplaced merchandise. 50 robots are being tested in various Walmarts across the country. The robots are 6 feet tall and capture 2 terabytes of data in 2 minutes. They use lasers, 2D cameras, and 3D cameras to do the job. Now give it time, we're going to have Johnny Five as a Walmart greeter. It doesn't look good for guitar maker Gibson, who is $560 million in debt. You know what? Maybe they should invest in auto-tune. That seems to be used on, like, every piece of music nowadays. Celine Dion has canceled three weeks of her Las Vegas shows in order to have some needed ear surgery. Which is kind of ironic, since I feel the need to have a doctor check for damage in my ears every time I hear a Celine Dion song. Even if you don't do drugs, there's a pretty high chance your fingerprints have traces of cocaine and even heroin. Researchers from the University of Surrey in Britain found that slightly more than 1 in 10 drug-free study participants had cocaine in their prints, and 1% had heroin. 
They chalk it up to the prevalence of the drugs in society, with users handling cash and other items that wind up in wide circulation. The study was fairly small, involving 50 drug-free people and another 15 who had used cocaine or heroin in the previous 24 hours. Scientists used solvents to extract substances from the prints for analysis, explains IFL Science. They also had the subjects shake hands, and the clean users showed traces of the drugs after a handshake with drug users. Believe it or not, cocaine is a very common environmental contaminant. It's well known that it is present on paper currency, says Surrey researcher Melanie Bailey. Even so, we were surprised that it was detected in so many of our fingerprint samples. You know, if there really is cocaine all over the place, like even on our hands, how come we don't feel happy all the time? There's actually a GoFundMe campaign to save Toys R Us. I don't want to pay up, I'm a Toys R Us kid. Former President Obama has signed a production deal with Netflix. We've already got a president that used to be a TV star, so why not a TV star that used to be a president? Kensington Palace said on Thursday that invitations for the wedding between Prince Harry and Meghan Markle have been sent. Around 600 people have been invited to the May 19 nuptials at noon at St. George's Chapel in Windsor Castle. I can only assume my invitation is lost in the mail somewhere. A 17-year-old boy has been suspended from school thanks to a phone call to his congressman about gun control. Noah Christensen, a junior at Robert McQueen High School in Reno, Nevada, called Representative Mark Amodi's office during the 17-minute school walkout to protest gun violence earlier this month. He expressed his opinion that bump stocks should be banned and the minimum age to purchase a gun should be increased. That probably would have been okay, but then he told the staffer who answered the phone that members of Congress should get off their blinking butts to do so, only with much more colorful language. The congressional aide called Christensen's school to inform the administrator of his language, and the teen was hit with a two-day suspension for disrespectful behavior slash language. However, Christensen's supporters say he was exercising his right to free speech and that Amodi should apologize. The school district says students were expected to act appropriately and with decorum during the walkout. Well, see, there, there's your problem right there. You expected teenagers to act appropriately and with decorum. The U.S. added 700,000 new millionaires in 2017, and none of them are us. Meghan Markle is getting her own wax figure in Madame Tussauds. The hard part will be finding an area of the museum where another celebrity wax figure won't try to sexually harass her. A surprising study seems to indicate that driving while using a hands-free cell phone may not be any safer than driving with a typical handheld phone. A comprehensive study on distracted driving has found there is no conclusive evidence that hands-free cell phone use while driving is any less risky than handheld cell phone use. Also, there's no evidence that cell phone or texting bans have reduced crashes. The findings come after nine states have imposed bans on handheld cell phone use while driving, and 34 states have imposed texting bans for drivers behind the wheel. Despite the findings, the Governor's Highway Safety Association does not recommend that restrictions on cell phone use or texting be lifted in any of the states where they presently exist. Well, yeah, of course not. I mean, that'd be like looking at the books and realizing murders are on the increase, with your solution being to just simply make murder legal. Yeah, there you go, problem solved. The University of Wisconsin campus is proposing eliminating 13 majors, including English, philosophy, and Spanish. But you could still major in textiles and fashion design, so a quality education is still available to you. More than a quarter of Americans have not cracked open a book either print or digital, in the past year, and the number's on the rise. The figure has risen to 28 percent as compared to 21 percent just four years ago. However, the survey of nearly 2,000 people by Pew Research also found that Americans overall are still fairly well-read, averaging 12 books per year or a book per month. You know, I am certainly well-read. I mean, I have probably covered every drive through menu board in town at least three times. Ben Carson says that he bought a $31,000 dining table for his office because the old one was dangerous. Police say the dining room chairs should be considered armed and upholstered. 
Become a patron of the show and get exclusive content just for official weirdos. Get the details at DailyDoseOfWeirdNews.com. And if you like scary, true stories, check out my other podcasts at WeirdDarkness.com. For Daily Dose of Weird News, I'm Darren Marlar, and I'll see you next time, weirdos.